I start today's video with questions. What is the level of complexity and operational criticality of the considered next generation of steam turbines that the biggest turbine manufacturers have tested around the world? What has been the highest steam inlet temperature and pressure ever in operation in steam turbines? Considered ultra-supercritical? What does an advanced ultra-supercritical steam turbine mean? Today's video is super interesting until the end dot and I will tell you this in much more detail about this new generation of steam turbines that is emerging around the world. Let's go! For whom you already follow us here on our social networks, you have already seen some content here, specifically talking about the largest steam turbine in the world, with a generation capacity of 1900 megawatts. To give you an idea, just the length of the reed the last stage of this turbine measures an incredible 1.90 meters. I'll leave a video about it here on the card so you can check out more details about this video and then. But I'm not here to just talk about reed length, which obviously also for this largest steam engine in the world. It is obviously a low pressure turbine. Today I bring a different approach to other challenges and barriers that have been overcome and, most importantly, validated in large modern highly complex steam turbine projects. And there I am referring mainly the inlet steam temperature and pressure to better understand where we are going and the magnitude of the challenges overcome. We must first know where we come from, disregarding projects very old. Therefore, considering how it was cut the 50s and 60s, both the pressure and temperature of the inlet steam has been increased year after year, thanks to advances in research and engineering mainly materials, to the steam conditions of thermoelectric plants. They have changed over time and so have they. Changed the classifications of steam turbines. Roughly speaking, we have the following classifications of steam turbines, the so-called subcritical turbines, with lower inlet vapor pressure at 165 bars and an average temperature of 540 degrees. Then the so-called supercritical pressures, above 250 bars and above 550 degrees Celsius and has been, roughly speaking, the limiting standard to the present day. These steam conditions were quite suitable for turbines. Steam of each era, thus contributing to improving efficiency of the entire plant. Together with the adoption of technology to improve the efficiency of steam turbines that have evolved according to the times. That said, we finally entering the focus of today's video topic regarding existing technologies and latest advances in materials engineering. What can we expect from the next generation of modern steam turbines? Do you follow our networks? You must have seen it. We recently ran a poll on our LinkedIn specifically with this theme and as you can see there, although I may have been a little confused, since we mentioned the condition of the plants ultra super critical and not advanced ultra super critical. Anyway, most people there got the poll wrong, and we will detail this further here. Today we can say that we live in a new era, the generation of steam turbines classified as ultra super critical. As guidance. We are working with vapor pressure here above 348 bars with temperature above 600 degrees. It seems like a lot. How about we think about classified turbines, such as advanced ultra super critical ones with pressure above 275 bars and with temperatures up to 760 degrees? This is currently being tested. Can you imagine that? These ultra super critical turbines, they are commonly applied in large cycle thermoelectric plants combined, powered primarily by coal. So these are turbines that operate together through a turbinigas, followed together with a steam turbine. It is also very common for them to be included in turbine configurations. Double flow with reheating, the so-called reheat. Some studies identify considerable opportunities in reducing CO2 emissions and can reach 27% for this new generation of turbines compared to the previous ones. Regarding thermal efficiency, it is considered comparable between supercritical turbines and the new generation ultra supercritical, both equal in some cases, and being the ultra supercritical, something close to 10% more efficient. In this graph, we can follow increasing steam conditions and consequently improving efficiency of a plant for each turbine technology. Without a doubt, what has allowed this progress is the development of steel technologies, mainly for the manufacture of rotors. In this other graph, we illustrate this scenario here. 
comparing the levels of mechanical resistance as a function of temperature and the classification of technologies or turbine generation to support the intake steam with such critical operational data. Another challenge, without a doubt, it is in relation to the materials of the superheater boilers as well, and on the one hand, the efficiency achieved with this new generation of turbine, ultra supercritical seems not to be that different, although we are talking about something close to 10%. These turbines have clearer advantages in other aspects. In the first place, it is an extension of existing technology, without changing the system itself. Therefore, there will be no major technological and principal difference of operation between current operation and maintenance technology. So, the idea of Giovanni Bronca's precursors, Parsons, Laval, Ratto and Curtis. To this day, for more than centuries, we have been experiencing always the same basic principle of steam expansion. Second advantage is due to the innovative technology to achieve these turbines ultra supercritical, being able to be clearly defined and focused. That is, if the appropriate material was developed, the most critical problem for ultra supercritical turbines can be solved too. And that is exactly where we find ourselves today. Thirdly, this technology can be partially applied to existing units in the case of modernizations, which also promises a wider application, which may even represent a survival for these old plants to existing generation units. In this image, we can better understand how this evolution took place. So in this specific case, in Japan, we can also observe something similar in developed countries and recognized pioneers in steam turbine design. Note then that this graph does not include the last decade. In this graph we have a vertical axis here, the intake temperature, and on the abscissa here, the years of operation. We can also see advances in terms of the introduction and use of new manufacturing materials, mainly the rotors, as we will see later. In these other graphs we can understand a little better the evolution of the net thermal efficiency of a power plant over the years associating with the advances resulting from the classifications of turbines, subcritical, supercritical and advanced ultra-supercritical. Note that even with the enormous advances, we are achieving a net thermal efficiency of approximately 50% for the plant. Logically we look only for steam turbine efficiency separately from flange to flange. We have higher levels of efficiency. As we have already said here and we have already discussed here a few times another graph highlighting the evolution or rather, the transition of turbine materials steam over the years, respectively, and the gains obtained also at the steam inlet temperature, again highlighting the classification stage achieved subcritical, supercritical and ultra-supercritical, the results and advances obtained in these ultra-supercritical turbines. They are not new and as largely due to research carried out by government agencies, in this case, mainly by the Department of Energy from the United States in consortium with private companies and allocated approximately $27 million to research. More specifically, I am referring to early studies around the year 2009, a national effort between agencies American government and U.S. turbine manufacturers such as GE, Alston, Siemens and Westinghouse this considered the first phase of studies, which was around 2009, addressed the need to identify and analyze ultra-supercritical turbines advanced, organizing and proposing process modeling, micro-forecasting, structural and short-term mechanical testing of materials for forged parts of rotor, housing, vanes, studs, and small-scale or laboratory-scale castings. Based on this selection, leagues were selected material keys for the second phase of the project, more specifically around the year 2015. This second phase, in turn, has already specifically addressed expansion on an industrial scale of these materials to design and manufacture with confidence the components of this new advanced ultra-supercritical turbine. At the same time, this second phase, also of the project, evaluated cost estimates for these considered state-of-the-art turbines and its comparison with current ultra-supercritical technology. Here is an observation in this second phase of the project. The companies Austam and Siemens withdrew their shares citing commercial reasons, and then, with the departure of these companies, mainly Alston, it changed. There are some studies, for example, involving rotors, welded on not welded, focusing only on the rotors, not welded. The project was considered highly successful, 
and met all the consortium's objectives to enable the next stage of turbine development ultra super advanced steam critical for the forgings of these turbines. The project successfully developed a new alloy called 282 from a standard commercial double fusion form to the turbine rotor full size steam engine. Among other various discoveries and advances in the line of alloys and materials, as validation of computer heating systems, radio for treatments and homogenization during heat treatment and post-casting to prevent cracks in the materials. Obvious problems in this condition and operation welding process advances for castings and pipes as well. With that, it was possible to perform calculations and arrive at a comparative investment relationship. So, it was found through some studies that an ultra-turbine advanced supercritical cost approximately twice the value of a comparable ultra-supercritical turbine. Considering the MW factor per megawatt generated, basically, in these new materials the use of base alloys is expanded, mainly nickel, which partly explains the increase in this cost. However, this is not the main reason for the increase in costs. In fact, there are other parallel studies already indicating smaller differences. In, in this capital cost between current and new generations of turbines, projecting additional and lower costs in the order of 10% difference. By the way, as a curiosity, the studies show an approximate cost of capital close to $3,000 per kilowatt of generation for this type of turbine. Another significant contributor to the higher cost are the long reconnaissance steam main piping lines and would be made with alloy nickel based, such as Inconel 740, among other tested and applied materials. In this project we can highlight materials such as N105, H263 and H282. Only in the turbine housings can thicknesses be required with more than 100 mm in high added value technological material. In total, the initial research project included seven stages or tasks in the completion of these and other complementary projects. Around the year 2021-2022, a final review of the learnings was carried out by the consortium and with the involvement and support from the utility industry proposed a component testing facility to take the next technological step in development of advanced ultra supercritical turbine technology, which includes including the world's first steam turbine of this new generation. So, currently we are in the demonstration phase of the project and technological advancement. This means that, considering as a guideline the technological maturity scale the TRL, MRL concept, we are entering or transitioning from level 7 to 8 and 9, that is, leaving the demonstration steps or in operational environment for production and continued production on a large scale or commercial scale. As these concepts were developed, this technology will likely become more cost competitive. In light of these studies, China and India, for example, have already announced plans to build such factories in the next decade. As experience with the technology grows, risks and costs associated with this technology also tends to decrease, obviously. So, concluding today's video, we saw that technology and the development of ultra-supercritical turbine shave advanced over the last 15 years, has advanced significantly, and this technology is already on the verge of being present, and be inserted, implemented and commercialized. According to experts and the consortium of these companies, the increased efficiency of this technology has significant drivers. The first driver in energy markets, where CO2 regulations, they require the use of carbon capture at coal-fired power plants. Increase the efficiency of this energy cycle will reduce CO2 emissions emitted per megawatt of electricity produced in scenarios that require partial capture of CO2 emissions. The higher the efficiency, the lower the associated penalty will be the addition of carbon capture to the plant as well. It is estimated that every 1% efficiency increase of an 800 megawatt plant eliminate around 1 million tons of CO2, the second driver in the U.S. energy industry market. Coal-fired power plants typically have low fuel prices and capital and labor costs higher, the largest component of the levelized cost of energy. It is associated with the capital for the construction of the plant. However, this is not the standard and is not the case in other parts of the world, where fuel prices are much higher and labor is much cheaper in these cases. Then the savings in fuel costs, associated with improved efficiency, it tends to offset the higher cost of capital. 
And what about us Brazilians? Although we have a cleaner energy matrix here in renewable, mainly focused on hydroelectric generation, we have already said here that the country will also demand for new thermal power plants in response to the increased share of generation by renewable sources, with characteristics of greater intermittent generation. ABRAGET studies highlight that on the horizon is that they can see before 2050, there is no possibility whatsoever of operating a system with a level very high renewable energy, without thermal generation that support this expansion. Above all this comes the question, do we have a vocation, a condition or a need, to implement projects that demand this new generation of turbine steam around here? Leave your opinion here in the comments. Today's video is this one. Thank you for your company, for your attention, for your participation. A hug and see you in the next video. Bye.